here are just a few shortcuts that I have started using that I have found. When I sew, I do four, I do at least, try to do at least two, but I try to do four up to six or seven. But I don't like to do like huge amounts because I need to move. And so if I do like lots and lots, then it just keeps me sewing and sewing. But anyway, so I have sewn these and when I sew along, I just pull it out, skip that area. And if it is not pulling at all, I just leave that thread inside of there and clip these apart like this. But if one of them happens to be pulling a little bit, I'll just pull this up and clip it in the center. Those tails just stay inside the mask and it's no biggie. So then what you're gonna do is um, go over to the ironing board and press this seam open. I've tried to do it without pressing the seam open and I'm just not very good about it. So I lay this here in the middle, lay this seam back, and then I would come and I just go press, press, press. And I'm not gonna take you to the ironing board because it would make us dizzy walking over there. So I have done that on these two. Now, this is where the difference is, really difference is. I'm gonna flip this, just like we've been doing, like the pattern, I don't know, well actually, the pattern that I wrote is. I'm not sure how you're doing it. Anyway, um, I fold this back, and all I'm just gonna do is, since I'm using the interfacing in them, I am just going to sew the one down that doesn't have interfacing. If you're not using interfacing, you would just need to sew one of the seams down. Okay, so we're just going to sew there and keeping it even with the foot, pulling this open like this, okay? And then when I get here, I'll lift my foot up, push it out of the way. I don't bother cutting the threads because I'm going to get to that in a little bit. And I would do the next one. And I really do chain piece these together and I try to stay on. Okay, sorry about that. Got a little wacky. Okay. Okay, so here we go. We're sewing down there. Just catching that seam so it has a nice finished edge. Pulling it open. This way we don't have to do all that pivot turn and all that, but Here's what I really like about this, doing it this way, is now we open this up, and the one that doesn't have the seam across, that's the one, so it's mine with the interfacing, but yours may not have the interfacing, and you're going to fold this down about a half of an inch, which is about my finger this way, um, and I'm going to sew close to the top. Come back here and thread and my husband really likes it when I do this way too because he's on cleanup duty in the sewing room and this way there's a lot less thread around okay, and I'm going to sew close to this edge and trim it now whoops sorry okay so now instead of having to try and push that little wire cleaner or twist tie through that little hole, this whole edge is open. You can just open it up. I just, let's see if I can get this in the camera. Push it up in there so it's against the fold. Gonna, let's see. See how it's inside there? I'm just gonna push it up in there and fold this down. Just making sure that that pipe cleaner, I can fill it up in there, and then I'm just going to sew along there. Whoops, I missed the top edge on that one. And then, same thing here. We're just going to open this up, slide it in there, and then I'll Um, when we're using 
using nice cotton and it's not really, really thick, I don't do the sides. And then come in, sew the bottoms. And sew the bottom here. Yeah, there's a little bit of, okay, there. Uh-oh, sorry. Camera is falling. Too much wiggling here, Marianne. Okay. Then I would lift up, cut how many apart that I have. The pleating video is going to be separate. So I've already pleated these. And um, now I have my little pieces all pre cut. They're two and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I lay my piece on here, fold this edge down. So with about a half of an inch of seam allowance, I want those even, sorry, sorry. Okay. Those pleats in there, kind of laying how I want. And sew down here and do a back neck. And I will do the same chain piecing with these binding pieces. Uh, are we even? Yep, we are. And sew over there. Now, I'm going to cut this apart. And I will just, if I've done like seven, four or five, I only have to trim that one tail once. Everything else will just be the little threads in between. I'm going to lay that down about a half an inch. Sorry, I keep wiggling. Okay. And then I'm just going to line up those edges. Kind of look and see if my pleats are somewhat straight. Somewhat is the operative word there. And back tack. And then, whoops, I kind of have a little goober there, but it will be okay. Okay, and then I would do the same thing on this side. Okay, lining them up. Now this next thing, okay, from here, I would actually go over to the iron, but I'm just gonna finger press it here. So I pull these out, and when I press these at the iron, I kind of pull this in a little bit, just so that this piece folding down is just a little less, okay. So I would press all of these, but I am just gonna do two ends, one end on each actually, okay. But I would do this over the ironing board. Okay, once I do that, whoops, I forgot to grab my elastic. Ooh, sorry, sorry. Not very prepared okay and then I would lay my elastic on here fold this up to the raw edge and fold it over and occasionally I will catch the elastic and then quality control it was my husband when he's tying the elastics whoops let's get that over Let's sew it down here. Now this is the one place that I really make sure I do a nice back tack when I start and stop this binding. Because all the other places have been enclosed and sewn over and so there's really no way they're going to come undone. But this one needs to make sure that you have the back tack. And there you go. And then so this one, and then I would trim this one, and if I had it pressed, I would just go through the other sides. And then when I'm done, I cut it, cut the pieces apart, and they go in the pile for my husband 
to tie the knots if you're lucky enough to have a knot tire. If not, we have just been doing, or actually sometimes I do the knots too. Just I just do a little, what my husband has taught me is called an overhand knot. Um, and just pull it nice and tight. And then this is where it catches me if I've messed up and sewn the elastic. And I have to take it off the end. And just slip that knot inside there. And see those threads that I left in the inside? You can't see them. And there we have a cute little doggy print. Anyway, hope this helps you. And have a nice day. Bye-bye.